Hi everyone, and you are welcome to this lecture, Python Strings Functions. In this lecture, we are going to learn about the most common functions of strings in Python. This lecture has only a code session, so I will start directly in the PyCharm IDE, and then I will end up this lecture by a quick summary. So let's get started. First of all, let me assume that I have the following string a equal to I love apples, apple is my favorite fruit. Now we will see this function one by one. The first function is lin function. As you see here, lin it's a function that takes string as an input and it will return an integer. And this function helped me to determine how many items, letters, characters, you can name it as you like, inside a string. So let me say result equal to lin a and then run. I will get 42, which means I have 42 letters inside this string. Keep in mind that len, it's a function that can be used with string, lists, tables, dictionaries, and so on, as you will see in the future lectures. The second function that I want to talk about is strip function. Strip, it's a function that returns a trimmed version of the string. I mean by a trimmed version here that strip will remove some of leading or trailing characters inside the string. By default, strip will remove spaces, as you see here, cars equal to none, but you can specify other characters that you want to trim from the beginning or the end of string. Let's see an example to explain what I mean. First of all, I will say result equal to a dot strip, and a in this case, I love apples, apple is my favorite fruit, and as you see here, I keep one space before the letter i. Now, when I say a.strip, what will happen? Look here, I print before and I print after. Let me remove this to show you that the first letter, which is space in this case, has been removed. So if I run, so this is before trimming or strip. And as you see, I have one space here, but this space has been removed. Why? Because strip will remove by default spaces from the beginning and end of string. Let's see another example about strip. I will assume now that I have the following string, which is comma, 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 and so on, r, r, t, t, g, then dot, dot, banana, then dot, dot, r, r. Then I will say result string dot strip, and I will say, please remove any one of these letters if it appears as leading or trailing characters. So now I will print before strip and after strip. So you will note that this is the original string, but after stripping, you will find banana only. Why banana only? Because all of these letters here and all of these letters here appear in these letters set that I specify here. So all of them will be trimmed. And finally, I will get only the word banana. And that's all for this strip function. The next function that I want to talk about is split. Split function, it's a function that splits the string at the specified separator and returns a list of strings. So split, take a separator parameter and how many times you want to split and it will return a list of substrings. As you see, by default, separator is none. And when the function will work, it will separate the string or it will divide the string on spaces. And as long as the string has space, there is a division. But you can specify how many times you want to divide by using max split parameter. Let's see some examples to understand the idea better. The first example I will say, don't forget this is my string. I love apples and apple is my favorite fruit. So if I say a.split and I print a and the result after splitting, you will see that I love apples and so on this is my string and the result after splitting I get a list of substring the first one is I the second one love apples and so on so whenever there is a space inside my string there is a division now let's see another example and now I'm going to divide my string but not on the default character which is space on this case I want to divide it on comma and I want to say please give me only one division so if I run as you see here, I love apples, then comma, and so on. So because I have comma here, so this is the division, and it happens here. So this is the first part, I love apples, and this is the second part. Because I have one comma here, so there is no meaning if you put one or you don't put anything at all. But let's say, for example, if I want to divide a character and run, you will see I get I love, then pills, apple is my favorite. So the letter that you choose to divide on will disappear. And as you note, I got only one division. Why? Because I choose max split to be one. So to summarize, split function is just to split your string into multiple substrings. The next function that I want to talk about is replace. And replace, it's very simple function that will replace a substring in your string by another substring that you choose. 
In this case, you have to pass the old string, which mean what is the part of your string that you want to replace. Also, you have to pass new, which mean the new substring and count, which mean how many substring you want to replace. So by default, it's minus one, which mean replace all of them. But you can say just replace one or two, which mean it will replace only the first one or the first two occurrences of this substring. Let's see an example. For the same string, which is I love apples and so on, I will say result equal to a dot replace f by j, which means replace all f letters by the j letters. Let me run. As you see here, I love apples. Apples is my favorite. So there is no f anymore and it becomes j letter. Fruit, there is no fruit, there is no f anymore and it becomes g because I choose to replace all of them. In the next example, instead of replace all of them, I will say please just replace the first occurrence of this substring, which is f in this case. If I run, as you see result equal to a dot replace f j1. So here I love apples, apple is my favorite, so f becomes j, but this f still f, there is no change. Why? Because I choose to replace only the first occurrence of this substring. Now let's talk about another group of functions that usually start with is. So for example, let me say a equal to, I will use the same string, I say a dot is. As you see, I have a lot of functions that start with is, like is digit, is space, is alphanumeric, and so on. You have to know that all of these functions return true or false according to the condition that you want to test. So for example, if I say a dot is digit and I run print run, I will get false. Is digit, it's a function, will check if each one of these letters is a digit. If all of them are digits, it will give me true, otherwise it give me false. And it's clear now that all the letters are not digits at all, so I will get false. Another function is space. And this function will give me true if all of the letters are only spaces. And as you see, not all the letters are spaces, so I get false. Another function that I want to check is, is lower, for example. And this function will give me true if all of the letters are in lower case. And also this condition is not satisfied, so I will get false, and so on. So you will find a lot of these functions, and these functions are very useful in context of web application in which we receive inputs from the user, and we want to validate these inputs. So for example, if I'm asking for age, and the user sent to me, for example, I am Samir, this is wrong, because age should be integer. So so all the letters inside the string should be digits. So I will use a function like is digit to check and validate this string if it correct or it's not correct. Now let's talk about other group of functions that change the state of letters inside the string. So we have function like lower, it's very simple. It will make all the letter inside the string in lower case. We have upper, which make all the letters in the string in upper case. We have capitalize, which will make the first letter in as a capital letter. And as you see here, it's already a capital letter. And we have title function, if I run, and as you see, it makes the first letter of each word a capital letter, like I capital, L capital, A capital, and so on. So this is title case of the string. The last two functions that I want to talk about that will help me to search inside the string, we have count and find. So let's see. The first function, which is count, it returns the number of times a specified substring occurs in a string. So as you see, count, it's a function that take a substring that you want to count inside the original string and start and end and two parameter that help me to determine the part of the string that I want to count inside. Let's see an example. X equal to a dot count apple. And as you see, I don't put anything related to start or end. So in this case, I will scan the full string. In the second example, I say count apple, but please just look for from the location number seven to the location number 11. Run. So as you see, in the first case, I get two. Why two? Because I have two apple inside my string. This is number one, and this is number two. In the second case, I ask to look for from the location number seven to location number 11. So if I count here, zero, one, two, three, four, five, seven, okay, eight, nine, 10, 11. As you see here, from seven to 11, there is no complete apple word. And for this reason, I get zero, and there is no apple in this specified range. Now let me make it 12, run. I will get one. Why one? Because in this range, I have a complete apple word. The last function that I want to talk about is find function. So let's see. 
Find it will search the string for a specified string and returns the position of where it was found. This function will take a substring and the part of the string that you want to look for inside it. And as you see, I have start and end to help me to do that. Again, I will use the same string, which is I love apples. Apple is my favorite fruit. And here I will say, please look for the word R in the first example. Whereas in the second example, I say, look for the word R, but start in the location number two and stop in the location 25. Let's run. As you see, in both cases, I got now minus one. Why minus one? Because here in my string, there is no R at all. So in this case, you will get minus one. Now, let me comment this part and put here is. And if I run, I will get 21. 21 because this is is in my string. So if you count, you will find that the letter I in the location 21. Now, if I say find is in the location 22 and stop in 29, for example, run. I will get also minus one. Why minus one? Because from this part to this part, the one that I choose here, there is no is at all and I will get minus one. And that's all for these functions in the string. The last idea that I want to highlight before I end this lecture, and it's very important idea, is the following. If I say a equal to, I am a Python developer. And if I print a zero, I will get the letter I. Now, if I say a zero equal to five, and print, I will get error. Why error? Because keep in your mind that string is unmutable, which means once you create, you cannot update. So this is not possible in context of string. You are not able to change the content. Now, if I say b equal to a dot, for example, lower or upper, let me put upper, make the example more clear. If I print a and I print p here, as you will see, I am a Python developer. So this is the original string. But when I print b, I get I am a Python developer, but all the letters in capital letter. So upper will not change the string a. Upper will create a copy of the string a, will update that copy and will return the result. So the original string, which is a has not changed at all and this is very important idea to keep in mind about the functions that update the content because this function update the content of a copy of the string not the original string and that's all for this code session now let's summarize in this lecture we have learned about a lot of functions that can be used with strings so please refer to python strings functions appendix in which you will find all of these functions summarized and please refer to python strings functions challenges in which you will find some challenges to practice what you have learned in this lecture thank you very much for your time and if you are available join me in the next lecture